Welcome to Lesson 14a, Wet Scrubbers. We're going to talk about wet scrubbers, which is another way to remove particles using water. As we saw in a previous lesson, spray towers tend to be tall, and therefore they can be expensive, and they use a lot of water. So we're going to introduce a more compact air pollution control system called a wet scrubber, specifically a transverse packed bed wet scrubber. I have a schematic diagram here. It's transverse because the air flows to the right with the dirty particles and the water flows from the top to the bottom. Unlike a spray tower, this does not have shower heads or anything. It just has a perforated plate up here and the water comes in and dribbles down onto these elements called packing elements. The air comes in from the left, the dirty air, and then it goes through this torturous route and comes out the other end more clean. We we'll use the same notation QA, UA for the air coming in, CN, and then QS for the water. That QS of the water just drains out. And you could do a differential analysis of this just like we did with the spray tower, except now it's a vertical slice at X with thickness DX. In either case, a spray tower or a wet scrubber, you're taking air pollution out of the air and basically transferring it to the water. Now you have a water pollution problem, which you have to get rid of. But we let the civil engineers take care of that problem. And this depacking is some characteristic diameter of these packing elements. The goal is to maximize the surface area of the water and make the air go through a tortuous path. You want the air to be doing all kinds of turning because this device works by inertial separation. Every time the air goes around a curve, you have inertial separation of the particles. Let's take a closer look at these packing elements. Let's imagine taking a close-up of one of these regions where we have a few of these packing elements. The idea is that the water is not necessarily in drops. The water drips down from the top. It coats these packing elements. And then the air streamline, as you see, has to curve around, move around these things. And therefore, there's inertial separation. And sometimes the particles then hit the water. We assume when they hit the water, they stay in the water and that water just keeps dribbling down through all these packing elements. You can see why you want a lot of surface area and a lot of arms on these things and stuff so that the air has to move this tortuitous path. QS must be big enough to coat the packing element surfaces. You don't want to flood this thing because you have to have enough room for the air to go through, but you want all the elements coated with water. The result is it uses much less water than a spray tower, and it's usually more compact. More compact typically means less expensive as well. Before I do any analysis, I want to show you some packing elements. They come in all different kinds of sizes and shapes and materials. So here's just some diagrams and names of some of them. I have a whole bunch here that I usually take to class to show you, so I'll show you by video. Here's one of these so-called Paul rings, P-A-L-L. -L. Here's some smaller versions of those. Here's a barrel saddle. They come in all sizes. Here's a little baby one. A lot of them are just a bunch of plastic rods and things kind of just thrown together like this. This one just has a lot of pointy things on it. This is a smaller version of that. Here's some hexagonal shaped ones. The packing diameter is not necessarily the diameter of the entire thing. It's really all these little elements in there, these little rods. That's what the air has to move around. So we want all that to be wet and the air has to go through all this path. Ew. Here's a used one we got out of a pack bed scrubber. A lot of the air pollutant particles stuck on this packing element. Now let's go back and do some analysis. We could derive a differential equation like we did before. The goal would be to find some expression for LC, critical length. It'll be a function of airflow rate, density, viscosity of the air, particle density, particle diameter, DC, this is the characteristic diameter of the packing element, the little rod-like things that I showed you in some of these examples. UA, epsilon. Epsilon is the porosity of this whole packed bed, including the water. For example, if epsilon is 0.25 or 25%, it means 25% of the cross-sectional area is open for the air to flow through. 75% is blocked either by the packing element material itself or the water that's surrounding it. And then finally, there's a parameter AP. AP is a characteristic parameter for these packing beds. AP is defined as the packing surface area over the volume of the bed. So the volume of the bed is this entire volume. And this is where I said the surface area is very critical. You get one of these packing elements that has lots of rods and stuff sticking out. You have a lot of surface area per volume of the bed. The dimensions of AP would be one over length, as you can see in its definition. While I have good news and bad news, the bad news is you have to generate a differential equation 
The good news is that this is so complicated that most people just skip that and they measure it. The really good news is that you don't have to calculate any particle settling speeds. You don't have to iterate. You don't have to do any of that. I'll just give you the result. The grade efficiency for some particle diameter of the air pollutant particles ends up being 1 minus EXP negative L over LC. That should look familiar. It's the same equation we had for the spray tower and for a number of other examples. Typically, you get LC empirically, in other words, by experiment, as a function of DP once you have this whole thing set up. You just have to take some measurements. So let's do an example problem. Here's some dirty air. I give you the characteristic diameter of the arms of the packing elements and the cross-sectional area. The particles we're interested in are 5 microns. But we're not really using any of that stuff because we'll assume that the manufacturer has measured this LC. So for these 5 micron particles, under the conditions given above, the manufacturer claims that his LC is 0.825 meters. What we want to do in this problem is calculate the required length of this wet scrubber to remove 90% of these particles. Compared to what we've been doing, these problems are very simple. We know LC, so we want to solve for L. So there's our answer in equation form, and now it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers. Plug in our LC, and then plug in our eta, changing it to 0.9. I get 1.90 meters. So what it means is that this pack bed scrubber would have to have a length L equal to 1.90 meters when you have that certain amount of water coming in and out, and you have this certain amount of air coming in and coming out with particles, and you have all these packing elements in there. In this case, LC is a little less than half of L. Just keep in mind that LC will change with particle diameter. Remember that particle diameter, particle density, and air properties, etc., are all determined LC. But we're not going to even try to come up with an equation for that. We'll just assume it's always measured. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.